Happy day two to each and every one of you. We are so glad that you joined us. Good morning. There is no better way than to begin the day in God's Word. And incidentally, if you're not getting our daily devotions and our Read the Bible in a Year, what a great opportunity for that. It's a great devotion. And like I said, a read through the Bible in one year. So just email nancy at encounterchurch.today and we'll get you on the list. You should have already been on there because what a great way it is just to connect with other people. Come on, again, that physical enforcing is, is for us to be distanced from each other. That physical distancing is what we're calling it. But I'm so glad that we can still be socially connected. And it's so important to stay connected to your church family, to those around. And we're doing everything that we can to help you with that. Share these posts with your friends. Come on, encounter church at home. Tell them that we're still having church just in a different way. But invite them to be a part of it because everyone needs encouragement and strength from God. God's word. What a hope it is. What a light. It's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, David says. So what we're doing through the week, Monday through Saturday, we're coming to you each and every morning. And we're looking this week at Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, the good shepherd. And what we're actually going to do is called soaping the scripture or soap it. We're going to look at the scripture. We're going to observe what it says to our life, to whom it is speaking. The application of of what it would mean to change our life. Because when we apply God's word to our life, it will never leave us the same. And then we're gonna pray, we're gonna seal the deal and ask God just to help us to apply it, to live it, just to be his word. So today we're looking at verse two of Psalms 23 and we're taking it from the New Living Translation. It says, he leads me beside the green meadows, or he lets me rest, rather. Let me get that right. He lets me rest in the green meadows. The New King James says, he makes me lie down. Almost like a forced thought there, but it's not. What it's showing is the desire that God has for us. How many times in our life have we gone the wrong way, but yet God has desired another way? But yet we feel, man, God, you're not going to take me. But God wants to steer us in the right direction. That's his desire for us to be in green pastures. And read on, it says, and he leads me beside peaceful streams, st still waters. So what's the observation that we can see in this? He leads me. What a great observation. What a great picture again. He leads me. But here's the clincher when I allow him to. Because you see, so many times in our life, we don't allow God to take the lead of our life. In the Gospels, it talks about a lost coin, a lost son, and a lost sheep. And I have asked this question that maybe people haven't, but I asked the question, why were they lost? I know the coin was lost because of neglect. The son was lost because of a choice he made. But the sheep was lost, I believe, because it had wandered away and hadn't heard the instruction and the voice of the shepherd. Because we see that in John chapter 10, that the sheep hear his voice and they follow and if we don't watch, God wants to lead us. But especially during these times when church is not as normal, when small groups are not as normal, when hanging out with other people is not as normal. We've got that tendency, if we don't watch, to get lost, to distance ourselves. And it's during those times that we need to lean in the closer to God, to his word and to other people. And so what do we see? He leads us to grass and still waters. They speak of food and refreshing for our lives. Come on, even during times of uncertainty, as I've said, these are not uncertain times to us. And God wants to lead us because he knows the pathway. He's been there before. And he wants to help us. I remember as a young man, I was 17, 18 years of age. Wow, that's a long time ago now. And um, I remember doing what was called the Duke of Edinburgh Award. And it was where we would go out hiking. We had to plan before. We had to get ordnance survey maps and we had to get compasses and we had to work out distances and heights and just everything. And we had to plot our course. And the reason why we had to do that is because when we went out to Wales or Snowdonia and we were out in the mountains, you could be on top of the mountain peaks there and the cloud cover and the fog be so thick that you couldn't see 10 feet in front of you. And what you would have to do is you would have to trust the paper, the coordinates that you had. You would put it on your compass. You would set the course and you would follow with the needle and you would walk. 
Man, it was scary being in a place that you didn't know, following just a number, just a coordinate, following a little needle that was pointing in a direction. And you didn't know what was up ahead of you, but you had to trust that beforehand you had already pl plotted and mapped the course. That's what it is that God wants to do in our lives. Some people call that blind faith. Oh, I don't like that. That's like blind faith. Man, I don't think we should do that. I don't like that. I don't want to follow that. You know, you can call it whatever you want, but I call it directing faith. It's a faith that I have, a trust that I have in God that I know that he's never going to steer me wrong, but he's always going to direct me in the right path. Come on, my decisions, though, are another story. When I want to go my way and I think there's a way that's right for me. Come on, Proverbs 14, 12 says there is a way that seems right, but the result, the end, the destination is not good. It's death. It's damnation. So that's the observation. So here's the application. If I'm afraid, if I'm in need, if I'm stressed out, does that sound like your life a little bit right now? It's because I'm not being led and I'm not resting in God's green pastures and still waters. I believe in even the darkest and the toughest times we can find rest in God. Again, when Jesus told his disciples, let's go to the other side, he's sleeping in the middle of the storm. They're like, don't you care? No, he's just modeling to us what we can do in the storms, that we can rest, we can find peace, we can find refreshment, we can find blessing. So here's my question for you today. What areas are you allowing fear to control your life in? Come on, what what areas of fear is driving your life today instead of faith because when we allow God to be our shepherd to guide us we have contentment when we choose sin and our own way we cannot blame God for the environment we create for ourselves notice the difference when we trust him we have peace contentment love joy I didn't say there wouldn't be storms but we have God in the boat with us but when we go our own way Man, we're going to create problems after problems. In our message last Sunday, we talked about six cultural shifts that we see today. And one of them is unwilling to take responsibility. And that's a big problem that we have today, that we want to blame everyone else for where we find ourselves. And instead of taking responsibility and saying, God, it's because I haven't trusted you. I haven't allowed you to lead me. So my challenge today is what area of your life do you need to give surrender to God? to trust him. You maybe don't see it right now. You maybe don't understand it all, but he does. And he's got the best in store for you. So let's pray today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you today that we can trust in you. I thank you that our hope is in you. I thank you that your desire is to lead us, to make us lay down in green pastures. God, that's the desire you have, not to force us, but because we want to out of a love relationship with you. Because when we know, God, that you're leading us, God, we can rest in that. The refreshing that you want to bring, like the still waters for our lives. And God, I pray right now that we would surrender every area of our lives to you, that we would allow you to lead us, that you would be that compass of our life, steering us in the right direction. Even when we can't see, we can put our faith and hope in you. And God, I know even through this storm of our lives, God, it's going to be another example. It's going to be another opportunity. It's going to be another time that we can look back and say, God brought us through again. That when we didn't see it and we didn't know it, we trusted and God, you came through. And we thank you for that. We love you for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Remember to stay connected if you're not getting our daily devotions. Email nancy at Encounter Church. If you've got prayer requests, you just want to contact us at the church. It's ec at Encounter Church. Stay connected. Stay involved. Look to reach out to people. Share our posts. Come on, let's make a difference in someone's world today. Have a great day. God bless. Bye.